Who is this group of professionals that make up the Seed Lab Committee? What they all are are public or independent breeders. They're all a little bit unique in their own way. You know, we have regional diversity, we have sort of perspective diversity, so, so technique diversities too in there. The group that we brought together for the Seed Lab Committee, they're not all working on the same thing. Their goal of increasing biodiversity and increasing people's excitement around seed, reverence for seed, and willingness to work with seed is all uh, unified. They all want that, but they go about it very differently. Uh, the reason I'm here today is because the industrialized uh, seed industry failed me because I live in a garden that's way up high in the mountains. Nobody anywhere is breeding mountain adapted seeds. I just can't grow the varieties that the seed companies are offering. My work, I guess, is influence the food system, bringing varieties and the stories and the times and the places where they were important into the light more strongly in recent years. Uh, the place of black and brown people in developing and maintaining these varieties. I think it is important to bring these stories back in and to show the complicated uh, relationship of the development of food in, in the Southeast. I had an epiphany about what seed was year two when my first 35 acre chem-free crop blew down in a storm right in front of me. And that's the first time I actually thought about biosecurity and the fact that I could have to start over. I've seen a lot of wacko weather this year. And I, this first time it's actually affected me on this end of the planet. I've been dealing with it for 10 years in the Pacific Northwest. Scared to death that we won't have biosecurity for the next generation. I think one of the biggest challenges uh, that independent breeders face is just how to make a livelihood doing the work that they're doing without giving up control. The challenges I think that are in common is usually you know, access to funding and a difficulty in really getting varieties to market. I think as a university breeder, I probably face fewer challenges than the independent breeders that don't have an institutional structure trying to do research that will help smaller scale seed companies and independent breeders and farmers develop varieties that really work for agricultural systems that are more sustainable. Having access to land, if we're trying to diversify the people who are in the system and working with seeds, more opportunities for them to be on land or to learn the skills because, you know, a lot of the people who were traditional seed savers are my age. Some of those people have, don't have successors in their family. So creating opportunities for mentorships is really important. Where is the succession? Who's next? And who's talking about that because it's not out in the public domain at all. Who's gonna take over for me? And who's my insurance if somehow I get run over by a truck even? Who's got all my work? I think the, one of the biggest challenges that independent breeders face is actually connecting with each other and connecting with community and having mentorship. And um, there's a whole generation of older seed savers and plant readers that have passed away in my time who are really just inspirations to me, even if I didn't know them personally, but also knew that I could call them. Life is short and having somebody else say, actually, you're gonna waste like, one whole growing season is, is a lifetime of effort and expenditure. So to even just to save someone a mistake of one whole growing season is amazing. My gardening became very localized. I have varieties now that are for our valley, our local ecosystem is providing the seed for us. And along the way, we learned that flavor in a local system is super easy to achieve. And because the plants, if they're happy growing in a local system, they just taste better. We're not looking to create a profitable seed company out of stone barns. We're learning that stone barns is uniquely positioned to offer an opportunity to help this movement on all sides.
So I think the involvement of chefs in breeding is something that's a really nice development. The Seed to Kitchen Collaborative project that I work on in Wisconsin really started with a conference at Blue Hill Stone Barns that brought together chefs from around the world to talk about breeding varieties for flavor and for local adaptations. One of the benefits at Stone Barns with having the restaurant right on site is that you could do that in the field with a lot more diverse varieties kind of earlier on in the process and get feedback from chefs right away for breeders that might have something really interesting that's just starting out and they want to know what people think of it. It would be really interesting if Stone Barns could offer scholarship and fellowship opportunities to support the kind of creative work that can happen in independent seed communities. Stone Barns can help with the challenges of independent breeders, I think, by creating a, like a physical forum uh, where mentorship can basically be hosted and that those educational opportunities can be shared. The story of how people worked with plants is how you learn the nuances and the observations and realizing that your individual observations matter. Stone Barnes is a special place in that you have access here to a lot of land. You have uh, people who have a, a wide variety of skills that can be used uh, not only in plant breeding, but uh, in the culinary uses, in reaching the public of eaters. The concept of consilience is that we're all, in the whole society, in, in this totally disassociated society that we live in, everyone is coming to the same conclusions. And we're all on that path there. And to me, the seed is the tiniest, most valuable piece of that process because it has had such a massive impact on society.